you can have all the talent that God provide you when you're born, or your mom, your genetic, or your dad. But without attitude, you are not going to achieve nothing. Maurizio Pochettino speaking the absolute truth there in that little snippet and a little bit of an intro into what this video is. You know what it is. You can see the title. You can see the thumbnail. I did one of these on Eric Ten Hag. As you all know, Eric Ten Hag is my preferred candidate as Manchester United's next manager. But it will be foolish of me to completely and utterly dismiss the idea of Maurizio Pochettino when at this point we don't know who is the favourite. So what I want to do in this video is sort of dive a little bit deeper into Pochettino. As a man, it's the same thing I did with Ten Hag. Yes, what makes him tick? What's his philosophy and his coaching based on? We'll take a look at his tactics he's using with PSG at the moment and what could it be implemented at Manchester United. It's a video to help you understand a bit more about the manager and how he can adapt himself to Manchester United and, and whether or not it's the right choice. All right? Now make sure if you do consider enjoying the video, consider it, I suppose, but hit the subscribe button. Down at the bottom, hit the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a new video. But let's dive straight into this one. And let's hear from Pochettino himself on, on what he sees himself as as a manager. Well, I think it's, uh, it's about to, um, I think, to care about the person. is the most important. They feel um, that we care, of course, like a player, because we have a... A very important side that is a professional, but the another that for us is is uh, first than the uh, is the they are a person, they are human, and if we care about them, I think yeah. you are after you are going to performance in the way that you expect, and you are going to help to improve and to achieve all that they want. I think the most important I think is how you are, you translate to the to the team, to the to the staff through your, your character, that I think is the most important. Pochettino there, really sounding like Ten Hag, isn't he? In that sense, when he's talking about the caring side of being a manager, about being a human being first, about personal relationships. Having listened to Pochettino for a couple of hours today, people skills, that seems to be the core focus of his, you know, he, he goes into a bit more depth into his philosophy and the meanings behind it all. but he really focuses on relationships, really focuses on interactions and building the trust that way. And I would say that's where you can definitely see a difference between Poch and Ten Hag and, 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 and at least in how they speak. I would say Poch has got, it leans more towards the people side of things. I'm not saying that Ten Hag doesn't, but Ten Hag for me, off the bat, it seems like maybe tactically he's in a slightly different place, a slightly more astute place than Pochettino and maybe that's going to be a criticism of Pochettino it always has kind of has been I suppose being limited in that sense but that's just a vibe I get okay that's just a vibe I get now going back to the clips of Pochettino this is what he had to say about the first things that he does when he moves to a new club like from Southampton to Spurs Spurs to PSG or maybe PSG to United our first thing that when we arrived to Espanyol or when we arrived to Southampton or to Tottenham was to work with with the staff with the club staff Mm. Because the club staff, they, they need to understand us, what, how we are, how we need to work, and we need to listen to them, uh, how they love to work, or the habit that they, uh, they have, you know, because they come from different way to work. And we need to, to centralize and to try to create our own philosophy. You need to create your own philosophy. If not, it's impossible, because uh, the kid man or the chef or the physio or the doctor, like the assistant manager or the manager. I think we need to believe and to build our um, own way. If not, if we believe in different way to, to work or to do the things, we are going to crash in some, in some point. And the message that is going to arrive to the player is going to be completely different. And then when the weakness arrive and when the problem arrive, that is going to make you to be a strong and stick with your ideas. You can get a bit of a sense of it from that clip there, but I can understand why players would enjoy playing under Pochettino if they sort of buy into that sort of mentality that he has. <clears throat> it's not really about the word philosophy, is it? There's not really going to be, I don't think, a book written about Pochettino and his philosophy and how he plays. But how he, how he approaches management, yeah, I could... 
He's the sort of person that you could you could understand if Pochettino was a general in an army and you would follow him into battle. I'm not saying that he's similar to Mourinho in that sense. Because Mourinho is more of a siege mentality sort of man. He's sort of like divide and conquer rather than getting everybody on board with you. Uh, but at Manchester United, when it comes to our structure right now, <clears throat> we need someone to bring all of that in. Pochettino's talking about, you know, working with the people inside the club, working with your Fletchers and, and your Mertos and, and everything that's inside there. Feeling is he still there? There's no feeling still there anymore. And maybe the same would go for Ten Hag. I'm not sure either of them are going to really come with a massive amount of backroom stuff. But we need all of that implemented. I don't know. As I said, <clears throat> I find it a little bit difficult to do these, this video here in particular and, and be completely impartial because of the fact that I do support the idea of Ten Hag over Poch. But I can see and understand in a, in a bit more detail now how it sort of worked for him at Southampton, how it sort of worked for him at Spurs to a degree and also at the same time, maybe where those sorts of deficiencies have come at PSG and maybe why, again, I'm being hypothetical here, maybe why, again, that sort of approach maybe wouldn't work so well at Manchester United. It's food for thought anyway, and that's what we're learning inside these videos. Uh, but in terms of his own development as a coach, how has Poch changed over his career? Yeah, to be honest, I was changing in my period like a manager in 11 years. Uh, first, uh, first day, I, I said to myself, I'm not going to negotiate. And I'm going to be inflexible in, in all the situation that I believe that uh, need to be in some direction. But after, with the time, <laughs> I was I trying to, I think, cross the line to the opposite. I, tried, I think that you start to feel that you need to negotiate. And you need to be flexible, like in the game, you know, um, you need to be flexible and not rigid. Um, and I think now I am, I, I am more in this another side that why not to negotiate? Why not to be flexible? I think all the circumstances are different and I think make you to find better solution. And I think... Uh, you can uh, deal better with the uh, with the problems, and and I think uh, uh, when I was with not experience, I think that is why with no experience I was uh, worse manager that I am today. You know. Now at this point here, I'd be particularly interested to hear what you think about that in the comments because Poch there admitting that when he started off as a manager, he he, he was sort of. Stop, he didn't use the word stubborn, but he was like stuck in his own <clears throat> methodology and his ideology, and that was it. But over the years, that's kind of changed. He's kind of softened and uh, maybe been open to different approaches, open to negotiating, I suppose. Is that a strength or is that a weakness? When it comes to authority of a manager, you should just be listening to the manager, right? The manager shouldn't have to bend his own thought process or, or what he believes in to suit a club or, or, or suit a player. And maybe, again, maybe that might be part of the... Um, the complex that I suppose he's had just right at the end when those big moments have come, the authority hasn't been there. The quality hasn't been there. And uh, we all know that's, that's the biggest criticism that a lot of people have of Pochettino and, and his, and his teams is he's done incredibly great groundwork to foundations are there and the success that you can't deny that success, but the ultimate success of winning the titles and the trophies and just falling just short. I don't know. Just the idea that, over his career, he's like, on the pitch. You've got to have that flexibility. No question at all. If something's not working, don't stick to it just because it's that's what it should be in, in your head. Change it. But I'm talking about how he approaches management. I think that's an interesting one. So you let me know what you think about that in the comments. But one part where he's completely and utterly unwavering, and that's to do with attitude. And this is where he's spot on. It's, it's because the attitude is contagious. Yeah. You... you it's... It's so simple. When you are capable to create a nice environment, happy environment with a good energy, all the people that arrive for different level, different country, different nationality, different culture is going to be that atmosphere is, is going to be so powerful yeah. that is going to involve you in this similar energy. Like when it's negative, it's so powerful 
negativity that is going, you can arrive being so nice and positive and smiling, but after a few minutes, you are going to be, the, be in the same circle, no? I think all of us United fans can completely and utterly agree with what he's saying here. First of all, the attitude is contagious. And you saw the clip at the start of the video, you know, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the right attitude, you will not win a thing. And maybe some of you will say that about Poch because he hasn't really won much. But he's going to win the league this year and he's won the French Cup. So he's won, some, he's won certain things. He's not a complete and utter loser in that sense. But the more I listen to what... Well, I think I'm being slightly unfair here because it feels like I might have skewed my um, source material on Poch because he spoke a lot without saying too much. Kind of a lot of hot air. I don't know whether that's translation and anything to do with that. But when it comes to attitude and that concept of attitude, for me, it's one of the single biggest problems at Manchester United. And in that regard, he speaks very eloquently on the importance of the right attitude, the contagious nature of the right attitude and the wrong attitude. And also he goes into a bit more detail when he speaks about how culture has changed, how... Younger players need to be coached a little bit differently. Listen to this part here. I think uh, football is changing, like the rules are, are changing, and in uh, the model change, the, the way to work change, the group of the coaching staff change, um, the player need to be managed for in a different way. Now you need that the group, uh, the coaching staff become the leader. Of course, it's different face, different character inside. But um, now um, we try to to change that mentality that is only one name, one sure. face. Now is the 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 leadership become uh, through the group of uh, the staff. If not today, yeah. the the player need to feel that Jesus is the leader too. Not only the gaffer, but Tony the same. You know, all the people um, need to create that um, way. Yeah. For, because the player need to to are the completely different, and you need to evolve. And today, the the society and the the young player are living in a different world. Now, I found that point there really quite interesting because. For me, it's, it's kind of like one of the fundamental problems that Manchester United players have. So many players there, have, they come in at the age of 18, 19 now, and they're, they're rich beyond their wildest dreams at that age. They, If they wanted to, and quite a lot of them do, they sort of take the foot off the gas instead of thinking, right, this is it. This is the beginning of what I want to achieve. It's like, well, look at me. I'm already damn successful because a lot of them use money as the measure of success rather than rather than silverware. And it's a bit of an attitude that sort of permeated through Manchester United for a long, long time. And what he's speaking about there, about how society has changed, how footballers have changed, I like that. He's aware of that. And the big thing that you get from listening to Poch, I'm sure you've heard it now quite a few times, is his collective. He doesn't speak about individuals really much at all. He speaks about the team. He speaks about every single member of the coaching staff. He speaks about empowerment of everybody. It's not just about one leader. It's about six leaders. Sometimes that can undermine your position as a manager, but if everybody's on the same wavelength, it's like having all your generals in a line. And that's something that Poch really, clearly, is quite a key part of his philosophy, having listened to him. And going into this part a little bit further, talking about the new players and modern types of players, he talks about the fine line that you have to walk between keeping a player happy and doing what's right for the club. We are not going to give one week uh, off it's because we want the best for them. It's not because we don't want that then they uh, enjoy life. Yeah. It's because they are professional. Yeah. If after one game and you are going to play another game and if you give three days off and the player go to... France to to Spain and Spain nice life yes first of all the players are going to be happy because you are allowed to go and enjoy with but after when they are not going to performance on the pitch they are going to attack you and say oh, come on you need to be professional but that is difficult to uh, create this uh, thin line that uh, be fair when the player need uh, holidays when the the player need rest but when you need to push them yeah. But always is 
for me, that is the, the key the key point, and the player need to trust in you. If some player one day is running, another is doing gym, another is at home, they need to understand it's the best for them because it's the day preparation that are going to help them to performance in the way that they want in the on the pitch. That bit there that Poch is talking about, that really is just, it's Manchester United to a T. Remember when Ralph Randick came in and he was like, why is Paul Pogba um, recovering from injury in Dubai? Uh, you know, I'm not using I'm not using Paul Pobre as a scapegoat here, but it was just an example that sort of came to my head straight away. There is a fine line between keeping a player happy and also keeping them at the peak of their game professionally. And Manchester United, we've lost that fine line for so long. It's tipped way, way, way closer towards what players think they need to be happy, but then ultimately they're frustrated in the job that goes in and then the leaks start happening. And that needs to be brought back in line. So again, I'm giving that as a definite positive towards what Pochettino is saying. He understands that in the modern game. And modern coaches have to understand that. A player from 20 years ago would be completely different to what a player is now in terms of what they need to be happy. And a Manchester United, in any vein of life, like you need to be happy to do your job properly. But just like Pochettino is explaining there, what makes them happy in a short term might not necessarily make them happy in the longer term when they're not being successful in the job, when they're not winning the silverware, when they're not in the Champions League semi-finals. So I, just, I, I, I like that part of it. And I think it's such a fundamental thing that whoever comes in next, Ten Hag or Poch, has to sort of Manchester United. That fine line has to be found. So I thought it was quite an interesting snippet from him there. But of course, at United, at any club, you know, not every player is going to toe the line. So what does Poch do to, with players that don't sort of buy into what he's trying to achieve at a club. But the player um, is so simple because the player want to play and the player want to be the best on the, on the, on the pitch. And when you are the, uh, the, the assistant manager, the coach, the goalkeeper coach, the first, uh, the physio, the doctor, all they, they need uh, to feel the confidence and need to feel the trust in the people that is close to you. And when the player understand that you are working for them it's not about philosophy to play one four four two or one four three three or play uh, more defensive in a contra-attack or dominate the game it's, it's about that they feel they feel they feel that you want the best for them and going back to what i said before a lot of what pochettino talks about when he's speaking about his fundamentals and what he's sort of built his career on as a manager it's a lot about personal relationships it's a lot about trust it's a lot about the unit that you build being uh bigger than the sum of its parts if you know what i mean that's the sort of that that's that's what comes across to me listening to him in terms of what makes pochettino tick and what makes his philosophy tick because as he explained there it's not about the philosophy of a formation and, and the style as i said you're not going to read pochettino's tactics 101 in a few years it's just not going to be the, the case. But he focuses really heavily on the human side of things. And maybe that's why it's so easy to, bu to buy into Poch. Maybe that's why it's so easy as a fan to buy into Poch because you can see that coming across. But maybe also that is a, a reason why maybe at the, right, at the biggest pressure moments right towards the end just falls a little bit short. Maybe because tactically he's not as astute as other people. I think that would probably be a fair thing to say, having listened to a lot of this. But one thing that we can all absolutely say about Poch is his ability to develop players and certainly to develop young players. So, so how does he deal with young players? So that's going to be a big part of it, right? Whoever comes in, Ten Hag or Poch, has to be able to bring through the academy players and not just token academy players, give them one or two appearances, properly bring them through. So what would he do with the younger players? How does he, how does he bring them through? First of all, you need to know... Uh... Uh, the, the, the young lad that you have him from because all came from a different uh, background and uh, and you need to inspire uh, for sure Dele Ali in different way that you are going to inspire Hurricane or Hugo Lloris uh, with different age um, the, the, when you know and you have uh, the capacity uh, like a group 
to identify the, the profile of the player, to know every single uh, situation that happened in the past, when they were a child, where they grow, uh, they came from Brazil, they came from uh, Ireland, from Korea. Mm. I think you cannot inspire all in the, in the same way. And the circumstances are so important because all are in a different uh, circumstance in a moment that you are going to, to face them and to talk with them. And um, the reality changes uh, every day and you need to be updated every day about what, what is going on inside them. I think Poch really does speak quite uh, impressively when it comes to the sort of sports psychology side of the game. And if I'm being completely honest, it's a hugely significantly major, hugely significantly major, a huge problem at Manchester United. Sasha Lense was brought in by Ralph Randick as a sports psychologist. Has that helped change the psychology issues that we've got at the club? I would argue no. But it is something he said there. It's about like root cause analysis, I call it. It's, there's no point fixing your problem on the surface if you've got a problem three layers down. And I think at Manchester United, we've just been surface. We've been scratching the surface for like eight years. No one's ever really gone down to the roots. We know that the roots, they lie with the glazers. But what else can you do? What else can you bring in? I think Potch can bring a lot to that. But for a lot of United fans, it's going to be tactically where maybe he falls down. So what I'm going to do now quickly to end the video is take a look at his uh, formation that he used against Real Madrid and sort of a quick run through of what we know the foundations of his team is built on. Because at PSG, the team's insane. The team's just insane. Look at that front three. Neymar, Mbappe, Messi. You've got a midfield there of Paredes, Verata, Verata, Verati, and Pereira. A back four of Hakimi, Marquinhos, Kimpembe, and Mendes with Donnarumma at the back. They've got an insane team, but realistically, it's just not worked. And when you come, when, when you reverse and you rewind this video and you listen to it, and you listen to the fundamentals of how Pochettino's teams are built on, on, the, on the human side of things, on, on everybody like working towards a common goal, or on building trust, on not really working on a pure footballing philosophy per se, but something a little bit deeper than that, you start to understand why probably it hasn't worked with this team. And you start to understand why probably there should be concerns about whether he can do that with this Manchester United squad. Because tactically, we know how they play, right? They play, uh, at, well, at Spurs, it was more of a 4-2-3-1, like that. Wasn't it? It was like that. Uh, at PSG, it's more of a 4-3-3. And we all know what it is. The, the, the hallmark of a Pochettino team, weirdly, oh God, I've just moved the player. Uh, the hallmark of a Pochettino team is not having one player less on the pitch. But the hallmark of a Poch team is out of possession, isn't it? How good they are out of possession. I think that was Pereira, wasn't it? Doing this on the fly. What a bloke. Lovely, lovely. Pereira is there. But when it comes to Poch being out of possession, I, the reason I'm not doing this in any sort of great depth is because I'm doing, I'm probably do separate videos on, on tactics and what it is. When it comes to what Poch will bring and what Ten Hag will bring, Poch is a man who's built his football on pressing out of possession, on intensity, on, run, on running stats. If you look at their stats of where when Spurs were Pochless before he was, when he was at Southampton, they were like 20th on the table for running stats. As the season progressed, that completely and utterly changed. And all of a sudden, Spurs 2015, 2018 were like top three in like the top 20 running stats for the whole season in, in Premier League history. That's what Poch does. So I'm not really going to speak too much about the tactics. There. I know that was a bit of a, a red herring, I suppose. But I think this video has kind of confused me a little bit, if I'm being completely honest. And I... I apologize if it's done the same for you. Listening to Poch speak, I can really understand how if you get on board with Poch and everybody's putting in the same direction, you can, you can see how it can work. But I also, having listened to it, and maybe it's because I was listening to like performance podcasts, maybe it's because I was listening to, I wasn't really listening to him speak too much tactically. I listened to a couple of things, him and Jamie Carragher, you know, when he went on Sky Sports, there wasn't really too much insight there that I wanted to bring to this video. This video has only doubled my own opinion, doubled my own opinion, made me double down on my own opinion, that Ten Hag would be better suited overall to what Manchester United need. 
but I can see the attraction of Poch and I can understand why Manchester United and Fergie would have really liked Poch because he's a very good speaker to listen to in that sense, in terms of the foundations that he would bring to the club. Let me know what you think about Poch in the comments below. No doubt there's going to be more people watching the Ten Hag video because nobody really wants Poch, but it wouldn't, it would have been rude of me and just foolish to speak about who could be our next manager and not do one of these videos on Poch, all right? Considering I've done one on bloody Brendan Rodgers and Zinazine Zidane, we were talking about interim roles. You let me know what you think about Poch in the comments below. I'll be really interested to know where you stand on here because there's no doubt in that he has had success in his career as manager. I don't think anybody can say that he hasn't because success is measured in different ways, all right? It's not just about silverware at the end of the season. There's, he was a success at Spurs. He was a success at Southampton. He's not been a success at PSG, but who has been, right? That's what I want to know. You let me know what you think about the whole Poch situation in the comments below. If there's any other videos you'd like me to do like this, you let me know. Until next time, though, take it easy.